So let's look at another molecule. Here's ammonia. We draw the Lewis structure for ammonia. We see there are three single bonds with hydrogen and a lone pair. The lone pair counts as an electron group. So we've got one for the electron lone pair here, and then we've got three bonds, a total of four groups. Anytime you have four groups, they're going to do that tetrahedral shape. So here's the tetrahedral shape of the electron pairs, the three single bonds and the lone pair. So the lone pair ends up at one of the corners. But when we look at the shape, the electrons are very small. They're essentially invisible compared to the sizes of the atoms. And so when we talk about the shape of the molecule, we're just looking at the atoms. We're not looking, we can't see the electrons. So you have to consider the electrons when you decide on the shape, and then you say, okay, well, those are invisible. It's there, it's repulsive, but it's invisible. And so here's our shape. This shape is called a trigonal pyramid or trigonal pyramidal structure. It is a tetrahedron that's missing one, one corner because it's invisible. It's not trigonal planar because it bumps up in the middle. If you ran over it with a steamroller, you could make it into trigonal planar, but it's not going to stay that way. So the lone pair definitely exerts its influence on those bonding pairs, and we see that in the shape of the molecule. So that's a trigonal pyramid. Let's look at water. Here's a structure for uh, Lewis structure for water. We've got two lone pairs now and two single bonds. But again, when we count these groups, four groups. Four groups of electrons will form a tetrahedral shape. So here's our tetrahedron. We've got a hydrogen at one corner, a hydrogen at another corner, and lone pairs at the other two corners. That's a tetrahedron. But when we talk about the shape of the molecule, we're looking at the atoms. So we say, okay, that guy's invisible, this guy's invisible, what's left without moving anything? And this is what water looks like, and it's bent. That's a very fancy name, isn't it? A bent structure, right? This is bent. So again, we see the influence of those lone pairs. If you just drew the structure for water and didn't consider the lone pairs, you might predict that this has a linear geometry, right? Why not? An oxygen and one hydrogen on one side and one on the other side, same, same shape as carbon dioxide. But it's not. It's not. And the fact that this is bent like this has a huge effect on water's um, chemical and physical properties. So here's a table that summarizes all of this business. I am not going to give you this table on an exam. And I don't think you should just sit down and memorize the table either. The, the best approach is to draw or observe the Lewis structure. And so over here we have these examples. Look at the Lewis structure. Okay, On this one, we've got two groups. And think, well, gosh, how could two things get away from each other? They're going to go on opposite sides. <clears throat> when you think about um, the, these two groups being repulsive, and maybe this is um, the central atom is, is the Earth, okay? And here's you, and here's your ex, and you really, really hate this person. So you're going to go on opposite sides of the world. That's as far away for, as possible, right? You can't get any farther away than that without leaving the planet, and that's just not really an option for most people. So opposite sides. When there's three groups, we can't be 180 degrees apart anymore, because then if you put the third one down here, then you'd have a 90 degree. And so we're going to form this triangle shape. This one also has three groups, double bond, lone pair, single bond. And so, let's see, let's draw on there. So on this guy right here, there's, there's a lone pair up here that is forcing these two oxygens to be closer to each other. 
So you, you look at the number of electron groups and you decide how can they get away from each other. There's really three options. There's linear, there's triangular, and there's this tetrahedral shape. Then if there's lone pairs, you just make that one invisible. So both of these molecules have three groups, right? But this one has one that's invisible. So its shape of the molecule is going to be different. Things are the same here. Electron geometry, trigonal planar, trigonal planar. Bond angles, 120, 120. But the molecular shape, here this one has an atom at each of its corners. So the shape of the molecule is the same as the shape of the electrons. But down here, one corner is invisible. So when we make that invisible, we can't call that a trigonal planar structure anymore. That's a bent structure. This guy has four groups. Four groups make a tetrahedron. And we've got atoms at each of them, and so that's a tetrahedral structure. Ammonia, again, four groups, but one's a lone pair. So the electrons arrange themselves in a tetrahedron, but one of them is invisible. And that's how we get this shape. And the name of that is trigonal pyramid. It, it's a little pyramid with a triangle at the base. This is trigonal planar because it's flat. And then water, we've got four groups. They make a tetrahedron, but now two of the corners are invisible. And so you're going to get a bent shape. So look at the number of groups, two, three, or four. Two is linear, three is trigonal planar, a triangle, four is that funky tetrahedron shape. Then if you have lone pairs, erase the appropriate number of corners and look at what you have left. I think that's much easier than trying to memorize a table. And it'll stay with you a lot longer, too. Any questions? So let's practice this. For those of you who like steps of instructions, here are your instructions. Draw a correct Lewis structure for the molecule. Determine the number of electron groups around the central atom. Determine the number of bonding groups and the number of lone pairs. And then, I, I, I cross this off because I don't, I don't like that. The book says, refer to table 10.1. No. Determine the electron and molecular geometries by just considering how the electron groups can get as far away from each other as possible. So let's predict the molecular geometry of ClNO. That's an L, not a capital I. And they're telling us that nitrogen is the central atom. So to predict the geometry, we need the Lewis structure. So they're telling us that nitrogen is the central atom. So we're going to put nitrogen in the middle, put chlorine on one side, and oxygen on the other. And then we need valence electrons. How many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven. Seven. And nitrogen has? Five. And oxygen has? Six. So that's what, 18? Yeah, 18. So I'm going to put a bond between each of these guys. So that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Does this structure look at all familiar? Just If we just change the letters, it looks a lot like the SO2 and the NO2 minus, doesn't it? Three atoms, 18 electrons, they're all going to have the same arrangement. So what we need to do is move a lone pair off of one of these atoms. Let's take it off of this one and move it in as a bond. So this chlorine has an octet, the nitrogen has an octet, the oxygen has an octet. 2468 2468 
two, four, six, eight, and the correct number of electrons. And since there's no charge, we don't put parentheses. Right. There's no charge. This is not an ion, and so we don't need brackets and a charge. We're just done right there. Now, you may ask, well, why did you give the double bond to the oxygen and not to the chlorine? Well, that's a good question. I think I mentioned to you last week, oxygen has six valence electrons, and when you write its Lewis structure, we see that there are two unpaired electrons, and that oxygen tends to form two bonds, and chlorine has seven valence electrons, and when we look at its Lewis structure, it tends to form one bond because it has this one electron here. And so that's good to know, but it's not necessary to know to answer this question. Because the question is, what's the molecular geometry? And even if you put the, the double bond with the chlorine instead of the oxygen, you'd come up with the same geometry. Now we have our Lewis structure, and we're going to look at the central atom, and we're going to ask ourselves, how many groups of electrons? There's one, two, and the double bond counts as one group because it is stuck. Those two bonds are stuck between the nitrogen and the oxygen. They can't get away from each other. So we have one, two, three groups. So here's our central atom, and three groups are going to form a triangle, right? And so we've got an atom here and an atom here. We've got two atoms, and one of them is a lone pair, right? So this guy is a lone pair, not an atom. So the electrons are forming a trigonal planar shape, where the, oops. <laughs> You could put the lone pair on top. You could put the lone pair up here. You could put the lone pair over there. It's not going to make any difference. Nope. So the angles here are going to be 120. And that's the best it can do of separating those three things. But the molecular geometry is the shape of the molecule. And so we say, well, those electrons are invisible. Those are invisible. What's left? So I'm actually just going to go in here and erase those guys. I erased those. They are still there. That's why I tell you they're invisible. It's not that they're gone, that you took them off, but they're invisible. You can't see them. And then look what's left. What is the name of that shape? That's bent. bent. Mm -hmm. So Lewis structure, number of electron groups, draw that out. Some of you may need to draw it out literally. Others of you can just picture it in your head. That's fine, too. And then make any lone pairs invisible and describe the shape that's left. Any questions about this one? Predict the molecular geometry for the sulfite ion. <laughs> So SO3, 2 minus. We're going to put the sulfur in the middle and the three oxygens around it. Then we need number of electrons. Well, we've got three oxygens, and they each have six valence electrons. And the sulfur has six valence electrons. And then there's a charge here, minus 2. That means we have to add two electrons. So that's what, 26? So I'm going to put a bond between each of these guys. That's 2, 4, 6. I've got 20 more. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Great. We had enough. We don't have any 
double bonds or triple bonds. And then we put brackets and the charge on the outside because, <coughs> excuse me, this is an ion. Now, the question it doesn't say that you have to draw the Lewis structure. And so if you left the brackets off, it's just work for yourself. So it, it would be OK. So we draw the Lewis structure. Then we look at the central atom. How many groups? Four. Four groups. So four groups is going to be what shape? The prefix for four is tetra, tetrahedron. So here's our central atom. And then we're going to have four things around it. Now, this is a notation that chemists use a lot when they're trying to do, draw three-dimensional things. The straight lines are in the plane of the screen, and this wedge shape is jumping out at you, and the hashed one is going behind the screen. So here, actually, I don't want to put it there. We've got three atoms and a lone pair. The electrons are making a tetrahedral structure, but there's a lone pair. Now, does it matter that I put the lone pair on top? The only reason I, I wanted it on top is because it makes it easier to look at after I erase it. So the lone pair is invisible, so I'm going to erase it. And we're going to look at what's left. What's the name of that shape? Trigonal. And it's not flat, it's a trigonal pyramid. So the molecular geometry of that ion is trigonal pyramid. And the difference between trigonal pyramid and trigonal pyramidal is just a noun and an adjective. So it doesn't really matter. Questions? Oh, yeah, I keep jumping ahead of myself. So here's this uh, notation that we use. Straight line means in the plane of the paper. The hashed line is projecting into the paper where the screen is behind. And the wedge is, is coming out. So I'll just, I'll just draw you one of those again. So like if we were drawing methane, we might put the carbon here and hydrogen and hydrogen, and then this one is sticking out, and that one's behind. And, and once you get the hang of drawing those, it's a lot easier than what we were trying to do on Thursday. So these are the geometries that, um, that we're going to be using, linear, trigonal planar, bent. These are easy because they're, they're planar. They're flat. They're two-dimensional. The tetrahedral and the trigonal pyramid end up looking kind of funky. But here we've got this one sticking out, that one going behind, this one sticking out, that one going behind. <coughs>